Check it out. So far, come with a rear rock, which is feels like solid. Feels like it's a, from the steel because it's a bit heavy. I'm gonna put it aside. Uh, everything looks good so far. So far looks good. So I'm gonna remove this from the box, and it does have some box over here. So let's see what is inside the box pedals looks like aluminum I don't see the brand wrench multi-tools the charger and on a manual and some zip tie just in case so let's see how large the charger is so the charger is a uh, 2 amp looks like so okay so it's a um, 2 amp charger should be fine and that's how it's gonna look the wheel is attached to the frame I'm gonna remove this bike from the box right now and try to assemble it okay I removed from the box it's very hot outside over 90 degree right now so the battery came separately packed which is very well protected uh, rear rock front fender and the wheel it looks like it's 160 millimeter disc brakes probably uh, mechanical i'm gonna show you how to install the wheel handlebar and uh, fenders and rock hopefully because very hot and very hard to install while it's like over 90 degree outside and we don't get much shade over here here's a life hack first you would need to remove uh, both uh, nuts from both sides uh, including the washer uh, it's a locking washer over here so you would need to remove them okay and the same thing you will do on this side completely remove this nut this way it will be much easier to attach remove this nuts and locking washer and next you will bring this um, fork up remove this uh, protective uh, for the fork and insert the wheel it should be very simple because you already removed the lock make sure you insert the brakes between these two pads and it should be like this then you can put uh, on the stand next thing you will take this uh, locking washer put it in first okay and then reattach with a nut and you do the same thing on the other side you put a locking washer first and reattach with a nut and then you use the tools to tighten both sides uh, the way they set it up to, for transportation they turn this uh, way so you would need to turn opposite so i would loosen these two bolts already and the top one you would need you would need to remove this uh, rubber um, cover from the top i just do my fingers remove it loosen this uh, top uh, bolt and turn around then tighten up the top one first okay and the sides you can tighten up them later once you install the handlebar but I'll tighten a little bit now and you can put the plastic back a uh, rubbish one move this uh, four bolts before installing the handlebar okay so you will remove this front bracket and uh, four bolts and then install the handlebar uh, it's very hard so the camera stopped working so I got another camera right now and we'll install the handlebar first and I reattach with uh, my uh, like the bolts, the same it was before. Okay, all four of them. I do everything by hands first, and then I'll tighten up later. Because you would need to readjust the handlebar the way you want it. And next, you would need to attach this uh, front 
fender. Uh, before doing that, you would need to remove uh, one bolt over here and another from another side as well. Also, when you completely assemble it, make sure all these cables connected. Okay, because it looks like it was disconnected. Very easy. Just plug in back to make sure all of them plug in before you turn the bike on. And also, I will attach this headlight. Uh, I will use this bolt to attach the headlight and the fenders right over here. All right, so I attach fenders and the light. So I recommend first to attach on the bottom over here with the two bolts from both sides and then attach the light. It would be much easier. It's very simple, only three, and it stays very well over here. So next step, you would need to attach this um, rack and it comes with um, bolts already attached. So you would need to remove from here one, two, and then uh, it comes also with the uh, integrated light so you would need also attach this one to the rack once you install the rack so i remove the four bolts from one over here one over here and from another side then you would take this rack and make sure this one is fit so you can a little bit bend it back and then you would att uh, reattach i'll start probably from the top to attaching everything i do with hands first there shouldn't be no much force okay and now it's time to attach this um, tail light you will remove these two nuts from both sides and reattach it to the rack and retighten with the same nuts you just removed and i do by hand So it will look like this. So I tighten it with a two nut underneath over here. Insert this uh, like this. And then you would attach with a zip tie. That's why there is zip ties to the rack. And the last you would take these two pedals. Look on the side where it says L and this marking L, it means left side. And you attach left to the left and right to the right. And the last you would insert the seat in to position you want. Tighten nut on one side and just on the level you want and reattach. That's it. Very nice seat actually. And that's how the bike would be after you assemble it. The rack is attached, fender is attached, handlebar attached, everything good. The seat is very comfortable and I just want to show you. Right now I need to load down the seat actually. but. It's a very comfortable position. The handlebar is pretty wide. I believe it's like over 28 inch. I need to measure it. Uh, I'm going to tell you later on how wide the handlebar, but it looks like very like wide. And just want to show you. Uh, let me show you how high the seat post can go. So the tallest one is up to here. Uh, like, so probably somebody is, uh, six and five maybe it feet tall can fit it so for me probably can go like this would be more than enough so i have another like actually it's even tall probably even less miss likely uh, when you're running off-road i prefer low like this and then let me see how low you can go so this is a low seat so probably somebody who is 5'6 can ride it, I'm not sure exactly, but the seat can go low. Again, it's step over bike, and it looks great, I like this part turn, the green uh, wheels are having like nice paint, it's like sparkling on the sun. So let's talk about the spec. So the bike weighed uh, about 72 pounds with the battery, the battery weighed about almost 9 pounds. So if you remove the batteries, you will feel a big difference as well. Uh, you need to unlock with the key. It comes with two keys right here. So you would need to unlock it, pull it up a little bit and remove it. So over right here would say 48 watt volt battery by 17.5 amp. And also it comes with a charging port over here. Easy to put it back. You just put it like this and slide it down, lock it in, make sure you lock it, 
make sure it's not removable so it's locked and right over here there's a button you can see what the battery charge is you just push on it and the battery all these uh, stickers assemble the wiper like a snake as you can see really beautiful and nice pattern they come with a front headlight which is a jewel and also it comes with nice tail light once it's on it does come with a brake light and when you press the uh, brakes even the light is off it will still activate it it comes with nice actually the steel i was right uh the rack which you need to attach it's only like holding on the two bolts from this side and two bolts on another side it can hold up to 65 pounds but most likely even more derailleur guard over here and uh, it comes with a seven shifter uh, uh, so derailleur is by shimano tourney tz model shimano cassette a pro wheel front crank and over here you can see the display it's a m5 which uh, very popular and it's very bright on the sun so large numbers of the speed you can see some uh, power also voltage there's uh, a lot of information you can find while you're riding on this display if you need the light turn on is very simple just pressing the button light on the horn is right here very loud as well it's come with nice rubbish grips with some rest the wiper come with five pedal assist level to switch the pedal assist you just press plus sign or actually it uh, says arrow up or down and you'll see it will change with zero it means uh, no power going to your pedals and if you press uh, button arrow it will activate and hold for a few seconds it will activate the walk mode walk mode is good for uphill going if you need to or in the mud to shut it down you just press uh, any brake or you can press any pedal assist level it will turn off so it's um, very easy to operate the bike shimano shifter right here it comes with 160 millimeters disc brakes which is mechanical by speed uh, i never heard about this company but we'll check it out how it works the front fork comes with a locking mechanism over here and also preload adjustment to make it uh, a little bit um, stiffer or so smoother fork and you can lock it in easily by twisting this lock and unlock when you need it let me show you how the fork works and it's only 60 millimeter travel which is pretty good actually the rear four bar linkage suspension works pretty well and it's by brand HLT 100 1200 pounds which uh, does a great job and it should be real nice for off-road riding as well the frame it looks good it's not as heavy only 72 pounds I think it's great weight with the battery and the handlebar it's 28 inches I just measured it so it's pretty wide it comes with a half throttle controller located right over here it's pretty much isolated so if you're riding in the rain i think should be no problem again it's a uh, lo looking real nice powerful e-bike and this is viper senada electric bicycle from senada bikes and if you like it check link in description for extra discount code also the discount should uh, work on all the bicycles they offer and uh, we're gonna go right now for the speed test and hill test to see how fast it can go with me on top of it and also to see if it can climb on the steep hill with the throttle only all right so now i'm gonna go for speed test to see how fast the bike perform on flat surface with a throttle only and pedal assist as well um, also i'll take it for uphill test to see how the bike can perform on throttle only and i put about 15 on the front tire psi and 17 on the rear the maximum is only 20 psi on these tires so always check the tires before pump the air in because sometimes they have 30 sometimes they have 20 or sometimes they have 70 depending on the tires
All right. So now I'm going to go for the speed test right over here and see how fast. So 14 on GPS, 14. So I'll go with GPS. It's about 20 on GPS right now. 22, 23, 24. Very fast acceleration. 25, 26, 27 on GPS. 28, 29, 30. And uh, 30 on uh, display, 31 on display, 31 on GPS. And then I'll stop here. So actually, wow. I thought that I was going to hit only 30 on this, actually even less. Because it says uh, without load only like 34 miles per hour without load. And I'm 215 pounds. And I made 31 on the short distance, which is pretty amazing for this type of price range bicycle and it's very smooth actually the speed does not really feels good uh, so it feels like you don't ride that fast because the bicycle set up pretty well actually um, I'm gonna go another speed test right now with pedal assist to see how fast I'll go also I notice uh, so I'm gonna switch uh, to the let's see to level G number seven and go with a uh, pedal assist We'll go with pedal assist let's see to number seven and go see how fast it can accelerate so it's a uh, 16 21 24 26 29 31 32 uh, oh, I think it's one of the fastest bike I tested recently 33 miles on pedal assist and I didn't want to go faster because the stop sign but if you have a more distance to travel I think you can go 34 miles an hour very impressive speed if you want fast bike for off-road or on-road wiper probably the right bike for you so let's go for another test to see how the brakes works it's mechanical brakes they yeah they don't squeak but usually mechanical brakes are not as strong so you have press very hard to stop it and Let's see how far, I'll go about 20 miles an hour and then I'll break Actually it's a 22 and then I'll break over here yeah, It's not bad actually Surprisingly it's locking the rear wheel so which is good And see it's recording So um, the brakes actually not bad They're very quiet Tested many bikes, usually mechanical brakes or recently many brakes are squeaking I like when they squeak mostly when you don't have horn but this bike comes with horn very loud and the brakes are not squeaking so it's wow it's good the shock works pretty good as well so you should get really nice off-road ride and most likely I'll take it off-road later on when it's not as hot it's about 95 degrees right now outside so I need to go early morning or evenings and I want to do another test to see how easy to pedal the bike because what if you don't have any more power most people asking so right now I'm on gear number four pedaling the bike with no power assist no power at all zero as you can see pedal assist zero about eight months now I can turn to three it's still nice pedaling so this bike pretty light 72 pounds I think it's pretty light for this type of size bike for this power for the large battery you can pedal it with no problem on the flat road and go about 8 to 10 miles an hour that's a normal speed for beach cruising 9 to 10 miles an hour and it's very simple I mean they, you don't need to spend a lot of energy to power to pedal it it's just any 
it's about the same as any other flat tire bike also uh, the handlebar is pretty wide 28 inch which makes it much easier to maneuver and to ride it you have a nice distribution and you got more space where you can attach your phone or whatever you want to attach to handlebar so now i'm gonna go for the turn on the power on pedal assist level one and we'll go for steep hill testing the derailleur i adjusted it works pretty nice the brakes works good i did adjustment on the brakes a little bit it's very simple if you want to check out link in description how to do it welcome to do check it out it takes only a few minutes to adjust it and it works just perfectly now another thing i noticed pedal assist attached to a throttle so it means if you are in pedal assist mode number one the bike will go on the speed number one you pedal assist level two it will go faster as pedal assist level two and so on and for this reason i'm not actually will test how fast the pedal assist will go it looks like the number one will go about six miles an hour but it will vary on the rider weight so i, I usually don't test this performance because they change but i can say the settings is good right now i'm on level two four miles an hour which makes your ride very comfortable and good but i'm gonna turn on camera once we get closer to the hill so you can see the steep hill test and that will tell me how powerful the motor is and the motor is 1000 watt which uh, should be able to climb uphill i'm checking what display show the display show me 53.5 volt the battery it does not really show me current the mileage show me actual mileage even i don't pedal it so it's about 10 miles an hour right now it will show me time i believe since the time i turn on the bike uh, odometer only two miles right now trip one and a half and that's all but on the top you see bar so how much juice left in the battery so let's get closer to the hill and test it out so i'm getting closer to the hill um, you should be able to see now the hill actually it's pretty steep some bikes with 750 motor never made it uphill some of them made it only half hill uh, so i'm gonna stop on the stop sign as i do with all the bicycles right over here make sure the camera is rolling and then i'll use the throttle only i'll put on the pedal assist level five and go and to hopefully we we'll made it uphill now it's about 16 miles an hour pulling um it says 10 miles eight miles six miles an hour four miles and it stopped it's mid and my and the camera stopped as well so it made only half heel you can see it only half heel and i just want to show you um it doesn't mean it's bad but this bike it's fast bike but uh the torque i believe it's only like 80 new meters torque so it's not really enough for 26 inches for tire to pull uphill if the tires are smaller like 20 inch it most likely will go uphill but so far it's only made half hill so now now i'm gonna try to use pedal assist and with pedal assist it's going uphill not bad i'm on the uh gear number four 
and you're just pulling uphill, no problem at all. So again, you can go for uphill riding off-road most likely, no problem at all. You can switch to gear number three. But if you use a motorcycle style bike to ride it uphill, then it will not really pull you up here much. It has a lot of speed for speed. So uh, it's going around 33 miles with pedal assist, even more probably if you lighter weight with uh, so it made it uphill very easily but again it should be fine just to go uphill on throttle only but not as steep but again this is a bicycle not motorcycle so if you want to go uphill without pedaling so you might need to get more powerful. I think the Sabre can go uphill because it comes, I believe, 95 new meter torques and Sabre and Herald, they can make it uphill over here, no problem. But this one only, I believe, 80 or 85 new meters torque. But again, this one is very fast, right out of the box. I didn't do any changes in the settings at all. So I'm gonna go downhill right now and test the brakes. So you, I will stop probably by the car. So I'll stop here and the brakes actually huh, about 40 miles smell a little bit but I want to talk to you about the brakes I'm not really proud of brakes on this type of bicycle for few reasons this is a very powerful bike very fast and should have like i believe it should have uh, hydraulic brakes but again if you're not planning to ride that fast you should be fine but if you have a higher speed like 30 miles an hour or so it will not really lock the wheel so it will give you a longer braking point so it's uh, not like something i like uh, but again they are not squeaking the braking fine but at higher speed it will be harder to brake that's why i always recommend to have brakes which will have hydraulic with more power for this type of bicycles so i'm not sure why they don't put hydraulic on these bicycles but as uh, in jail everything works perfectly on this bike the bike can go 31 miles on throttle only on the flat flat surface which is pretty fast on throttle only out of the box 23 with uh, pedal assist on shorter distance if you're planning to ride longer distance with non-stop you might hit 24 35 should be easily with pedal assist um, the way it's um, set the crank set and all these settings you can go 35 most likely easily on pedal assist without sweat um, if you're looking for bike again for off-road i think it should be perfect uh bike uh for the price range and power it does have a nice speed and mostly will climb all the hills but i'm gonna take it off-road as well so you might want to subscribe and follow my channel so you can see how this bike will perform off-road and uh, the display it's very bright you can see it um, during the bright sun right now very bright and you can see everything very clear all the information enough space to attach the phone or any devices you want to attach like light actually the headlight is very bright so i don't think you need extra headlight to buy it's a pretty bright headlight as well with the tail light brake light so the bike is fully loaded the only things i would uh, upgrade would be the brakes if you're planning to go uh, on a higher speed ride but again this is a bicycle not motorcycle it's not uh, meant to only use the throttle and you can get a really decent dis i think uh, distance on this bike since the battery uh, it's very large uh, 17 amp battery 17 actually 17 and a half which should last um, 
for pretty long distance with pedal assist. Uh, if you look on many other bike, uh, usually they come about 15 amp uh, with higher price than this bike. And that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.